In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my favorite free online email signature generator, and you can use it for both Gmail and Outlook to create beautiful and branded email signatures for yourself and your business, whether you're using a logo or a profile photo. And of course, it'll include your social handles and any other of the kind of crucial bits that you would wanna include in an email signature. But then if you stay till the end, I'm also gonna be showing you how you can then elevate this one step further by adding some really cool and simple animations to your email signature to make it really really pop when you send those emails across and of course we're only going to be using free online tools to create all of this so more on that at the end of the video but for now let's just jump straight in and create your beautiful email signature so the first thing you want to do is head to the link in the description so you can go to hubspot's email signature template generator and just start filling out the details to start creating an email signature that looks a little bit like this. So you can either have the created with HubSpot section on and off, I prefer to leave it off, and then just choose a template that suits the style that you're going for. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit limited, it is a free tool, but honestly, I really, really like the first template and I think that that works for what I'm looking for. So I would just select that once you start typing into these fields, all of this will be erased and it'll be replaced with your own information. So you have space for your first name, last name, job title, department, if that's relevant to you, your company name, phone numbers, email addresses, actual addresses, and then some social links. So it doesn't have every single social link like YouTube, for example, is not an option with these icons, but then you also have custom fields that you can add in that can still be clickable. So we're gonna go through how to do that. And then of course you can make it your own beautiful branded colors. So you can put in your hex codes for the icons, for the text, and then of course for the link color, which will also include your social media icons there. You can continue customizing it based on the type of font that suits your needs and then also the sizing of the font, but also make sure it's readable and not too, too small. But you will also check how this appears on desktop and mobile as your final kind of point of check. And then you can add in your profile picture, your company logo, and then some additional calls to action here. So for our purposes here, I've just gone through and filled all of that out with my details in my first name, my last name, where I'm located, my website URL, my email address, just filled out all of those different details and put in some brand colors and choosing my font. Now the bit that's left over is selecting your profile picture. Now this does have to be a URL, which is where people get a little bit stuck, but it's quite simple. Just chuck the image that you wanna use into a Google Drive and then get the link. Make sure the link is not restricted. So I think it's going to be restricted by default. Make sure you're changing that to anyone with the link. Copy that link and then just paste it in here, whether it's a profile picture or a logo that you wanna be using. This will allow HubSpot to pull that through because it's now publicly available using that link. So that's a basic beautiful email signature that you can then go through to create and then you can just copy that over. HubSpot may ask you to sign up in order for you to be able to actually copy this email signature or add it straight to your Gmail or Outlook using their instructions over here. But not to worry, it's still a completely free tool for you to use. You might just need to provide a little bit of information to be able to use the tool. Then within Gmail specifically, you would go to settings and see all settings. And that's where you can scroll all the way down. You can create a new signature if you'd like. So this is just gonna be a test signature and then I can just copy that straight in. And then once I go through and make sure that you're saving this, if I go to compose a new email, I will have the option to select this email signature from my options over here. It's not attached to a particular email address at this stage because obviously all of the email addresses I use within my Gmail account already have a signature attached to them but it's still an alternative signature that I can use at this stage. You then wanna make sure you're actually sending yourself a test email so you can see how your email signature looks on desktop and on mobile and in light and dark mode to make sure that it looks good and that all the links are beautifully clickable. And now for anyone who's interested in taking this one step further and creating animated email signatures like this one over here or my previously used email signature, which was also animated, let's jump into Canva and see how we can go about doing this. So within Canva, just go ahead and create a custom size design. Mine was 900 by 900 pixels. That's a little bit too big for what you actually need for your email signature, but 
I would rather have it slightly bigger so that I can control the quality a little bit better and then I generally resize it within a different tool that I'm going to be showing you in a sec. And then this particular animation was really, really easy to do. So it was just an image of myself. So you could do it with any image. I selected this one over here. I then used the background remover function to get rid of the background. And then I just placed one of the animated graphics from within the elements tab on top of this image. So I would just go ahead and size that down and make sure that it is place correctly then within the elements tab if you just search for something really it just takes a little bit of trial and error to get the right kind of graphics but for me anything social media related was generally going to be a good thing and then within the filters i just filtered this down by animated elements only so then if you head on over to graphics it's just going to show you these kind of beautiful graphics here I don't see it coming up, but I know it's actually related to this one here. So I might see if I can get the magic recommendations to show me the right graphic. So either of these would be quite good because they're both related to social media, but I prefer the hearts. And then I just size that down and made it look like it was coming out of my coffee cup. So that's the simplest animation and you actually can within Canva go ahead and just download this straight as a GIF by just going show me just the current page and then it can just be a GIF and I can go ahead and download that straight away and put it into my Google Drive and use it in my email signature. So that's exactly what I did. I've got it here in my Google Drive and then I can just go ahead and get the link, make sure that it's on anyone with the link and then just substitute what I'd previously had in my email signature and just swap out the image and it's going to have that GIF straight in there and I could just go through to create signature and go through the same steps and processes. So that's quite a basic animation. If you wanna get a little bit more complex with it, I'm gonna show you two more tricks of what I've done with my most recent email signature. So first thing I did was just create this kind of image. So all you would do there is grab a circle from the elements tab for the back of your image there and make sure you're placing it kind of on the edges of your graphic doesn't have to be all the way to the edge there. And then you also wanna grab a frame because that's going to allow you to put your image into a different shape rather than just a square. So in the frame section of the elements tab, you will find all these different beautiful shapes that you can use for this purpose. And then you just wanna make sure you're aligning the two circles up. And then, yeah, you would just plop in an image of yourself into the middle so you can just drag it and it'll snap straight in. If you double click into your image, you can kind of move it around so that it's in the right spot for you. And then you would just duplicate this a couple of times so that you can change the color of this back circle. So what we would do is we would actually start with the darkest color that we wanna be using here. So I would go with my darkest color here, then go to a lighter color and then go to an even lighter color there. Or maybe go with our nice turquoise here. And then I would just go ahead and duplicate this middle, middle color and move it down. So what this will do once I put it into the next tool I'm going to show you is it's going to loop this as a GIF going from darkest to lighter to lighter, then back to darker and then loop again starting from the darkest color. So we just need to go and make sure we're exporting pages five, six, seven, and eight, and making sure that we're exporting it as a PNG with a transparent background. So the reason I'm not actually doing this as a GIF directly within Canva is because Canva doesn't allow for transparent GIF exports. So it will only allow you to actually export it with the white background, which generally works as well if people are opening your email up in light mode, but so many people are reading their emails in dark mode these days. So I wouldn't count on the fact that people will be reading it in light mode. And if you wanna make it nice and transparent, going over to Easy GIF and GIF Maker will allow you to piece together these images into a beautiful GIF. So you wanna make sure you're unzipping your file, even though it does say zipped files are okay, but it doesn't handle zipped files very well. I don't know why. So you wanna make sure you're just uploading your images individually and it's got them there that looks pretty good go ahead and make a gif it's going to loop forever but it might be a little bit too quick yeah so that's quite hectic i want to make sure i'm slowing that down so it's not super distracting 
that looks pretty good. So obviously it's quite huge and that's what I was saying with the 900 pixel dimensions. It makes for a really big GIF. You don't need it to be this big, but that's where you can jump into Easy GIF and actually resize this, which also means that it won't take as much data to actually download your images from your emails. So that's always a good thing. Now I can just go by percentage here or you can just put in the actual width, whatever works best, and then it'll automatically resize that for me. So now we're down to 450 pixels squared and only 134 kilobytes as opposed to almost one megabyte up here. So that's really, really good. We can continue to compress this if we wanted to, but I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. So I would just save this and again, just put it into Google Drive and update that in your email signature. Now, finally, one last thing I wanted to show you is that if you ever have just a little bit of text, like what I've got over here that I wanted to put into my email signature, you know, I've got the Skillshare logo there, and then this is just a little bit of text. If you go through and animate this, so I've got this as a burst, you can actually export that as a GIF on its own. So I can go through and just download page 14 as a GIF. So I want to make sure it's only downloading the current page as my GIF. Then I can refresh my page in Easy GIF, choose this new file and upload that just so we can go through and crop this because it's quite big and we actually only need this bottom section here. So I would go through and just crop that. It's a little bit easier than having to set up like a completely separate template within Canva every time you want to have a slightly differently sized image. So now this is quite huge, but it's cropped to the right dimensions. So I could go ahead and resize that. And again, I probably only need it to be about 50% of how big it is at the moment, maybe even smaller. So I could actually go 40%. That looks pretty good. It's only 62 kilobytes. So again, that's really great. I could add this to my Google Drive. I would also want to make sure I'm renaming it so that it's something legitimate in case somebody does ever download it from my email signature. So this could just say learn with me on Skillshare. I'm going to get this link. And then within your email signature, this is where the custom CTA can come into play. So you can add this in to the bottom of your email signature over here and make sure you're adding in the URL that you want it to go to, which in this case for me would be my Skillshare URL. And then that's just an additional animated element to your email signature. Now this is still quite large. So if that happens to you where you think, oh, that's a little bit intense, you can copy the signature and actually just input it into a blank email like this first before putting it into your settings. That way you can actually edit the image down a little bit. So I would just scale that down. And in my case, I would right align that so that it's in line with the rest of my signature. And that looks a lot better. And I could now copy that and put it into my signature over here. Because unfortunately, once you're in this section, if you click on an image, it's not actually gonna allow you to edit anything. But if you've got it in your email here, you can actually just click and drag a few images and edit them there and then put them into your permanent email signature. And that's it for now. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, I'd love it if you give the video a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss future videos just like this one. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.